Hi, and welcome to Physics Fundamentals. I'm your host, Angie, and today we're going to be talking about radio astronomy. Here are some fun and interesting radio telescope facts. Did you know a radio telescope imaged the first asteroid? While scientists knew about asteroids since the early 1800s, they did not know exactly how they looked. Radio telescopes help them overcome that challenge. Did you know radio telescopes discovered the first exoplanet? The James Webb Telescope imaged its first exoplanet in 2022, but the very first exoplanet was confirmed in 1991, and it came from a radio telescope. The first pulsar was discovered by two radio astronomers, Jocelyn Bell Burnell and Anthony Hewitch. They named this pulsar LGM-1. Another fun fact is that due to radio telescopes, we think there's ice on Mercury. Images from radio telescopes have highlighted the reflective regions of the planet, and scientists theorize that those spots are the result of ice. Did you know that the largest radio telescope is located in southwest China? It is the world's largest filled aperture radio telescope. The Green Bank Observatory in West Virginia houses the largest steerable radio telescope. And the largest radio reflector telescope is located in Zelenkutskia, Russia. Hans Lippershey was the first person to apply for a patent for his telescope in 1608. While he got plenty of acclaim during his lifetime, his achievement is one of today's lesser known facts. It was Lippershey who inspired Galileo. When Galileo heard of Lippershey's telescope, he immediately set out to work on his own. Galileo built a telescope with 20 times the magnification. He's also credited to be the first individual to record observations of the sky. In the world of telescopes, everything moved lightning quick after Lippershey's invention. Galileo improved the design and by 1611, Johannes Kepler improved it further. But the first radio telescope is credited to Carl Jansky. Carl Jansky made the discovery of the first astronomical radio source serendipitously in the early 1930s. His pioneering efforts in the field of radio astronomy has been recognized by the naming of the fundamental unit of flux density after him. Now we're going to take a question from a student. What's your question? Hi Angie, my name is William and I am 10 years old. I go to McKinley Elementary School. I like astronomy and I have a few questions. What is radio astronomy? What are radio waves? I know someone that can answer your question. His name is Jonathan Pober. He is an astrophysicist whose research focuses on radio astronomy. He loves to share his knowledge of astronomy and astronomical observations. Jonathan? That's a great question. The simplest answer is that radio waves are a kind of light. But I guess that doesn't quite sound right. We can't see radio waves, and you're used to seeing light. But as it turns out, there are a lot of different kinds of light, and most of it we can't actually see. What we're used to thinking of as light is specifically called visible light, and it's a very small part of what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. So this electromagnetic spectrum is made up of what we call electromagnetic waves, and those waves are light. The visible light, the light we can see, have a very particular wavelength, so how far that wave travels as it goes up and down and up and down like waves do. And for visible light, that wavelength is about a little bit less than a micron, so think a hundred times thinner than a human hair. But electromagnetic waves with different wavelengths are different. And many of them we can't see. And so you may actually be familiar with one kind of invisible light, and that's infrared light. Infrared light has wavelengths that are just a little bit longer than visible light. So it's like a little bit thicker than a human hair, maybe. Our eyes can't see infrared light, but we can build special cameras to detect it. And then we can use computers to convert 
the infrared light measured by the camera into a picture that we can actually see. So for example, let's take a look at one of those. So I've got my infrared camera here, and I'm going to show an image of Angie who's standing off screen. And what we're seeing right, in white are the hottest spots, and in purple are the coldest spots. And that's being measured by the infrared light coming from Angie. So as you could see, warm bodies like us, we emit infrared light. And so we call those special cameras sometimes heat vision or night vision goggles. But there's nothing magic about them. They're a machine that detects a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves are some of the longest wavelength waves in that electromagnetic spectrum. Now we said visible light has wavelengths about the size of a human hair, but radio waves have wavelengths maybe centimeters, meters, sometimes even kilometers. And they can more or less travel directly through a solid body. And so you can't build a camera the same way we do with visible light or even infrared light. We need a different machine. What we build to detect radio waves are antennas. So let's see an example of an antenna detecting a radio wave. So what we have here is a radio transmitter. When we flip the switch, this is going to turn on and make radio waves. And here in my hand is a radio antenna. It's just a simple piece of metal and with a little light bulb here in the middle that's going to light up when we're receiving the radio waves from the transmitter. So let's go ahead and turn that transmitter on. And as I bring the antenna close to it, that light bulb lights up. So this piece of metal is serving the same purpose that that infrared camera did. It's detecting the radio waves, receiving them, and lighting up the light bulb as an indication that they've been received. So we can see radio waves, but can we listen to them? So that's a very, very good question. Because we often do associate radio waves with sound. We talk about listening to the radio in the car. Cell phones use radio waves to send their information, and we think about talking on a cell phone. But we're not hearing the radio wave itself. Instead, we're using the radio wave to send a signal. And then the computers and our radios or our phones, they can decode that signal and convert it into sound. So as an example, let me show you how we might use light waves to send a signal. So I can use light to send a signal. A simple one is SOS. If you're familiar with Morse code, long, 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 short, 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 long, 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 spells out SOS. But doing that with the light looks like this. So that kind of coded signal we called amplitude modulation. So we were changing or modulating the brightness or amplitude of the light over time. And so someone can then decode those changes in brightness and get a message. And the very first radios were amplitude modulation or AM radios and they used the same basic concept to transmit signals over distances. A radio receiver will then detect the signal and decode it and convert it into sound that we can listen to. Since then, we've developed other ways of sending signals. There's frequency modulation, or FM radio. That's something you may have heard of. But the same idea is there. It's, we're putting a signal into the radio wave, sending it out, and then our phones or our radios receive that signal, decode it, and convert it to sound that we can hear. It might be interesting to note, I'm a radio astronomer, and I'm not someone who listens to the sky. But just like stars and galaxies will emit visible light that can be measured with telescopes and you can make a picture of what's out there in space, some things emit radio waves. We can build antennas to detect those radio waves, collect the signals, and construct a map of the radio sky, just like we do with ordinary telescopes. Well, thanks for listening, and I hope you learned something about radio waves today.